What's up guys, it's Bryn LeBlanc coming back with another look development guide. I'm going to show you how to make custom procedures and filters and substance designer that can be used in Painter. Let's get started. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to add some ornaments and some plank variation uh, within this little door here. So today I'm going to be using uh, some materials that were done by Mark Foreman in his signature series on substance. And wow, this stuff is really, really amazing. So go check it out. It's on Substance Source. You can download it and modify it however you'd like. So I'm just going to use it as my base uh, so that I can show you uh, the different uh, door variations you can do with like different ornaments and things like that. Uh, so yeah, go check him out on ArtStation or on uh, the Substance uh, website. His stuff is insane. And he just did the Q&A with Wes a couple days ago. All right, anyway, let's get started. Pull up a little bit of reference here. Okay, so what I'm gonna be trying to do is to uh, create a couple of these little ornament pieces and uh, plank patterns using custom filters from Designer. So let's pull up Designer. Okay, so now we've got designer open. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna create file, a new substance, and then scroll down to through your uh, graph templates, painter filter, and let's call this door plank. Okay, so you're gonna have an input and an output. Basically, whatever you're making in, in this graph, you need to hook it up into the output, and uh, this will be the thing that's read by painter. So I'm gonna try to make just a uh, simple plank pattern like this one. So let's start out with this little plank pattern here. So I'm just gonna make a shape. And also to note, this is more of a, this is how you make uh, filters for painter, not a specifically substance designer tutorial. Then gonna make a tile sampler. Just gonna stretch it out so that it goes on infinitely. And uh, in the uh, 2D view, if you just hit spacebar, uh, it'll show you how your image is tiling. Now, one, one of the things that I want to do is I want to differentiate each one of these uh, planks a little bit. I want to expose this uh, X amount plank here. So how I can do that so that I can, uh, in Painter, I can interactively move this. I can click on this little curve here, go to Expose, and under Input Name, I'll make New, and we'll call this Plank Amount. As you can see now, there's this little blue curve here. So how we can access that is we just double click on our graph. Under input parameters, you'll see there's this new uh, drop down tab called X amount. So I'll grab this identifier name, plank amount, the first one we made, and I'm gonna put it under the label. And that's what it's gonna look like in Painter. And there's a couple different types in this drop down: integer one through four, a Boolean, which is just a true false statement. Uh, integers are a um, whole number slider and integer one is just uh, one single slider. Uh, two, three, and four adds additional slider groups. Uh, float is the same thing as integer one, except float does decimals. And then string, I think, is for arrays or something like that. Uh, so I'm just gonna use this integer. And then there's two types. There's slider and there's drop down. So I'm just gonna use slider. And then uh, there'll be a default value. The default is set to seven right now. And then I'll do the maximum to like 30. And then I'll set the uh, minimum value to one. So minimum value is just the, the value that it starts out at. And then I'm gonna have the step set to one, which is uh, how big a jump the slider makes. Okay, so to view what this is gonna look like in Painter, you just click this little eyeball. It says switch to preview mode. So just click that. And now I've got this interactive slider that's changing my plank amount. And this is the same thing that I'm gonna see in Painter. What I want to do is, this is going to be my, my control state. Okay, now that I got my control here, um, there's a couple of different parameters that I want to expose. Uh, the color random. So I'm just going to click on this, expose. And this is set to a float value because it's going to go between 0 and 1. Okay, so now if I increase the plank amount, this will be an interactive value. Let's add in these kind of lateral ones. One thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expose the size.
I'm actually going to expose the uh, Y amount as well. And I'm just going to speed through this section because I'm just adding um, plank thickness and it just took me a little while to get it set up. But it's just the same process as everything else. Just finding attributes you want to expose and then expose it. Got our plank amount, got our plank random and size. So now we've got all that exposed for painter. So now I'm just going to add in these little rivets that are in each of these boards. Shape. This little shape here. I'm going to make a tile generator. And I'm going to drive the same, the X amount here by that same value. So we do by plank X. Let's do a blend. Just making sure these line up. So let's try to see if this works. All right, awesome. So what I have happening now is that these little uh, pegs are tracking on top of these planks with this plank amount. All right, so what I want to do is I actually want this these uh, signals to be separated. So instead of a blend, I'm going to do a multi switch grayscale. And what this does is it'll just switch back and forth. So I have two inputs, one, two, and it'll just switch back and forth between those nails and uh, the plank. So now that we've got those two, uh, another one that I want to do is this the kind of square pattern. So now I've got this one. I'm going to uh, add a, I'm going to expose this handle for this horizontal middle size. And this will increase the thickness. Okay, thickness. And if you get lost during this, uh, I'm just going to have the file provided so that you can follow along as well. Square peg and straight. Then these are the two types of plank. So I'll make two multi switches here. We got square. So let's do. I'm going to call this plank type. Call this rivet type. Let's actually switch the order. Squares always on the bottom. So I'm going to do another multi switch. And this one is going to switch back and forth between rivet, rivet, plank, switch. All right. Let's look at this. We got plank amount, color, size, plank thickness, middle size. Care about this grouping. All right, plank type, only two. Rivet type, two. Plank rivet switch. Okay, so let's see what this handles, these handles do now. So, increase the plank amount, plank random. Uh, plank type, rivet switch, rivet type, and the two plank types. That one's not going to work that great, but ah, I'm not going to worry about that one. That one's too inconsistent. Okay. Now let's see what we can do with this. So we've got the plank amount, plank color random, plank thickness, plank type, rivet type, and the rivet plank switch. Um, and you can see it's actually a really easy graph. So what I'm trying to do is just create these controls. It, you could cr create these controls inside the actual material itself, but uh, like th this is just one use case. You can do this in many different ways. Um, so let's just try to get this to work. All right, here we go. All right, so if, after I've got what I want, and we can always come back to it later, uh, I'm going to save this package. So save as. Then I'm going to publish this SBSAR. Plank rivet. Default values. That's fine. Okay, so now that we're back over in Painter, what we need to do, import our resource. So I'm just going to open up my shelf and go over to this import resources, add resources, plank rivet, evil. 
So this first input here is just so how you can uh, make this uh, SBSAR um, searchable easier. So I just put medieval in the name. So anything that has this tag medieval will filter in the search bar. All right, so I'm going to make this a filter. It's really kind of a procedural, but whatever. Current session and then import. All right, so now we got Mark uh, Foreman's awesome medieval timber beam. Uh, just modified it a little bit. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate it. So that door as well. Let's add a black mask, and then I'm gonna add a fill. So in that fill, I'm gonna bring in my door planks into the grayscale uniform color. Oh, one thing I forgot to do. So one thing that I need to do is add the uh, per plank cutter. Okay, let me go back into designer. Okay, so the sampler doesn't have the vertical mask. Basically, I wanna turn off every other board for the sampler. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate. Okay, so what I wanna do is add another multi-switch. And we wanna do one with per plank, one with not. Save this out again. All right, so I'm gonna pull up in my shelf here again. It doesn't automatically update your um, SBSAR, so you actually have to open it again. So plank rivet, medieval, do filter again, and I'll do current session. Okay, so now I've got this per plank switch. Perfect. What we can do with this is now I'm gonna go into the medieval timber beam. So it looks like that. Uh, I'm just alt left clicking on the mask to show it, and then just alt left click on the other swatch to see it again. Uh, what we want to do is we want to change the attributes of this a little bit and offset this so that they are a little bit different from each other. I'm going to make a layer here. I'm going to copy this mask just so I can paste it in here. And I'm going to create an anchor here. Turn on this random color. Now this warp here. Now I'm going to make an anchor for this uh, this door plank. I'm gonna make another height there. And I'm gonna drive this with a, oops, another fill, and I'm just gonna use this, oops, this grayscale, and then do color or door plank control. For a little bit of per plank variation here. And now I'm gonna make another fill. I'm going to copy this layer because I just don't want to have to reset every setting. I miss being able to copy and paste so bad. Used to be able to just drag these. It's, it's, there's actually a ghost of what it used to be able to do. If you hold down control uh, in this little mask layer stack, you see this little plus? You used to be able to drag these uh, layers and then it would duplicate it. You can see it even has the little icon. And you would be able to, I could like just duplicate it within the stack and it was really useful or copy and paste it somewhere else and you can't do it anymore. I think it, they had said it was a stability issue. I hope they bring it back. But anyway, so I'm just going to copy this mask, paste it in here. And delete that anchor out of there. I just don't want to have to set all these settings again. I want to switch one. Okay, starting to starting to get there. So now we started out with this kind of base timber beam material. Now we've got sort of probably a little bit of roughness offset. Change per plank. 
Uh, we can also do that with color. Fill, or let's make a layer. I'm gonna copy that same mask, paste it into this one. Then I'm going to add HSL. And I gotta set this layer to pass through. So this is what we had to start, and then this is what we have now, and just kind of a per plank variation. Uh, one thing I want to do, let me just add a dirt real quick. I'm going to use this concrete. All right. Mask. Grounding. Okay, so now that we got our first uh, plank set up, what I want to do is I want to add those little metal rivets in there. So uh, let me see if I have a material over here that could work for that. Let's try this one. Okay, so let's add black mask here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab, copy this pet and this one. Paste that mask in. Let's do rivets. So now what we want to do is we want to kind of tighten up this signal a little bit. Then I want to add another layer in here. Copy mask. Okay, now we got those rivets working. So this first mask is just masking out the actual shapes themselves. And this one's actually pushing them out. All right, let's add a little grounding in these... Uh, it's rivets. Um, and I'm going to add an anchor and we'll do um, rivet control, add a black mask, add a fill. I'm going to use that rivet control. Okay. And I'm just doing a directional warp down. And I'm getting another fill. Just put that rivet back in and subtract it. I'll make a layer. I'm just gonna copy that mask that I just made. Okay, now I'm gonna add a filter. HSL. Now I'm gonna change the rivet type. Okay, so now we got this procedural uh, setup driving our uh, plank amount and our rivets. Uh, now I'm just gonna quickly set up the second door. Try to do this one. Now one of the reasons why I'm just time-lapsing uh, these next door setups is because it's just all the same concepts that I was using, using that same procedure that I made, just in different ways and referencing it and making anchors in different areas to drive different uh, properties within it. Because if I were to uh, record this entire thing in its entirety, uh, it would probably be about three hours long. <laughs> so uh, you can just kind of see, get, get the general idea of what I was doing. All right, so now we are finished with the, uh, I made four variations. I have this vertical plank with metal ribs, plank with metal, uh, with square metal, vertical with rivets and with horizontal metal stripes and this kind of square um, reinforced door and here are my final renders all right guys that's it for this video please like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications and comment below for any questions uh, or future video ideas and I'll see you in the next one